A very good morning to my wonderful Vidyashrians. Today I, Charu Goswami, your social science teacher, will explain you the very first chapter of civics that is the Indian Constitution. The very first question that comes in our mind that where do we find the rules that governs our country? So the answer is rules are written in the constitution which serves several purposes. So constitution is a list of principles that the people of the country agrees upon. So let's learn this chapter through some interesting examples. Why do you think the umpire has given a free hit for the batsman? Because bowler has crossed the crease completely which is considered as no ball as it is the rule of the cricket. Similarly in football the player should not touch the ball with his hand. In every game we have some rules and these rules define the game and also distinguish one game from the other. Do we have such rules in our society? Yes, we do have. Society also have, has constitutive rules. Earlier, these rules were formulated through consensus. And in modern countries, these consensus is usually available in the written form. So a written document in which we find such rules are, is called constitution. The next question I would like to discuss with you is that why do we need a constitution? Constitution serves several purposes. Let us look at them one by one. Constitution. Constitution laid out certain ideals, which means in which kind of the country we as a citizen living in. Secondly, the constitution set up certain rules and principles that an entire population in a country can agree upon. Let's understand it with the example of our neighboring country, Nepal. Earlier, Nepal was monarchy, which means the country was ruled by the king. And the previous constitution of Nepal, which had been adopted in the year 1990, reflected that the final authority rested with the king. After people struggle in the year 1990, established democracy. But the constitution rested the final authority to the king only. But in the year 2006, after the long struggle, they finally succeeded to the end of the power of the king. They had to write a new constitution to establish Nepal as a democratic country. The next question that comes, why people did not want to obey 1990 constitution and did not want to continue with previous constitution because it did not reflect the ideals of the country what the people wanted it to be. While moving to monarchy, to a democratic government, the constitution plays a very important role. Thus, the second important purpose of the constitution is to define the nature of the country's political system. India too is a democracy and constitution gives equal right to all people irrespective of religion, race, caste, gender and place of birth. The rights written in constitution for people ensure that leaders don't misuse power. As all people have equal rights, so the constitution ensures that the majority cannot enforce their views on my So the next thing I will discuss with you today is what are the features of the Indian constitution. The first feature is federalism, which means more than one level of government exists in India. These are central government, state government, 
and the local government or the Panchayati Raj. The second feature is the parliamentary form of the government, which means people of India can cast the vote and elect their representative. The third feature of the constitution is the separation of powers, which means as per the constitution, there are three organs of the government. The first organ is legislature, the second organ is executive and the third organ is judiciary. Legislature refers to the Indian parliament which consists of the elective representatives. Executive is responsible for implementing laws and running the government. And last but not the least, judiciary refers to the system of the courts in India. So all these three organs exercise different responsibilities. Also, each organ keeps the other in check to prevent the misuse of power. The fourth feature of our constitution is the fundamental rights. So, the fundamental rights are right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, right to cultural and education and right to constitutional remedies. These rights cannot be taken away by anyone. The next feature of the constitution is secularism, which means that the constitution ensures that no particular religion is promoted as the state religion. These features of Indian constitution ensure that India is a great place for all of us to live in. So let's recapitulate the chapter. A constitution is a list of principles that the people of the country agree upon as the basis of how they want to be governed. A constitution defines the nature of a country's political system. The constitution protects us from ourselves, which means we do not take any rash decision which hurt others' rights and emotions. The key features of the constitution are federalism, parliamentary form of government, separation of powers, fundamental rights, and secularism. My dear children, I hope you all must have understood this chapter and will love to explain this chapter thoroughly to you whenever we meet in person. Have a great day. Keep yourself safe and stay.